Carl, welcome to the club. We're coming to the end of your first day here at Charlton. Things are just about sinking in. How does it feel to be Charlton manager? <laughs> Not sinking in, no. Um, still quite surreal, really, to think that uh, I got a phone call about 10 days ago now to spoke about the opportunity of maybe speaking to the, to the owners. And uh, I, I jumped at that opportunity and it was uh, to, to get the chance to, to say this is where your next destination is going to be was was quite a, an important one for me personally. Um, but I've always said, if you look at anything I've said before coming here, my next step was, was probably one of the most important ones in my life. And this is, I think this is right. I really do. It's a good time. It's a, it's at an opportunity where we can push forward. We all know where we want to belong. And it's uh, no, it's not quite settled in yet. Let's say look, look at the place. It's a, it's a wonderful stadium. I come from a great stadium, and uh, these places are important to me. Home is important to me. And mm. uh, no, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to it still. I'm still, a, I'm still, I'm like a little kid. Yeah. I'm dead excited. Well, what was it about Charlton that it, um, attracted you to that challenge? Um, I've been here many times, and you walk out in the corner, just over there, and it's the intensity of the great the place and the, and the fans, and you know you're in a game. I feel like you. It's almost how English football is in some ways. It's just that passion and drive. Ironically, playing in the FA Cup on Saturday. And the tradition steeped in history with, with our country, it's, a, it's one that I'm really looking forward to. And it, and it, and it was sold to me, massively sold to me. Um, I think people who know me personally know that I, I'm a very, I make my decisions and I stand mm. by my own decisions and I'm a very uh, strong-minded individual. And, but, but when people come to you with a plan and a clear plan, um, and the youth, the youth, the, the youth setup is there's so many things to fit perfectly and I'm really excited about the challenge it's certainly going to be a challenge but I'm mm. certainly excited by it you mentioned having a look around you the stadium is mm. a great stadium we've got here it's a pretty special place to call home isn't it and you've come here with MK Dons on a number of occasions mm. so what were your memories of, of being a visiting manager here um, the badge scared you slightly because of the history that the club had and the players who've been here and, and even Premier League, well in the Premier League, this was always a place that nobody really wanted to come and play. It was the intensity and the honesty of the players on the football pitch. And, and, and that's, that's important to me, that the players wear the shirt with pride. And I said to somebody earlier that the most important thing for me is that players, before they put the shirt on, we're going to dedicate the next 90 minutes to that. When they take it off, there's nothing physically more they could have done. And to be able to walk out here as manager of this team, wearing our red strip, um, and hopefully taking games to the opposition, being fearless and being expansive and being aggressive in our press, aggressive in our play, aggressive in our finishing, aggressive in our defending. And there's certainly components this football club that I know we can improve. But what I would say, like say thanks to Russell, I think Russell's left a very, very good squad. A lot of the things that may be right or wrong, I think he started to wean a lot of them things out, and uh, it was the start of a journey. I think, and whatever the circumstances were, I've been lucky enough to take a club going in the right direction and um, that's massive to me and, um, and again another thing that's important what Nuge did over the last seven mm. days was incredible and uh, it's a tremendous testament to him and the players the work ethic that, that they put in for this this football club and I say I'm, I'm very very fortunate very very lucky. Uh, you had your first training session this morning, this afternoon with the boys. How, how did you find that? Really getting get, taking the reins yeah, finally. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Like I say, there's obviously the certain players in, in, in Mass Day Plus Two recovery mode. There's certain players who haven't been playing to see them, but start to get across some of the ideas and the rotations and the pattern of play and how we're going to press, where we're going to press. Uh, hopefully, it wasn't too much of an overload, but there's an awful lot of work to be done in the next two weeks for the next league game. Um, it's a massive two weeks for me, and I want to implement as many different things as I possibly can. Um, I'll be doing little games behind closed doors to try and implement some of them. And for me to find out what the best balance of the team is. Traditionally, everyone will, will, will look at me as a 4-2-3-1 man and, and playing with two, four very high players and being very expansive in that. And I think in League One, in the, in the four years that I've done, I think it's in League One, I think it was uh, five, sorry, it was twice we scored over 100 goals. So it just shows you how expansive I want to be. And so it's going to take time to find that that blend, um, but we mm. have good strikers here, so playing two at the moment seems to suit. We've, we've scored a number of goals recently, and that's something that I want to continue. Well, you've seen the side play a couple of times over the last week or so. 
must have been rubbing your hands together at Bristol Rovers with what was going on out there, five goals. But, I mean, what have you made? It's two very different games with Sheffield United as well, but what have you made of what you've yeah, seen so I far? Think, I think there's a very honest reflection of after the game on, on Saturday. I think that one knew Sheffield United were a very good side. Um, but to, to get something out of the game in the way that we did was, was incredible. And I think the players deserve a pat on the back equally. The uh, Nuge. But I said to my daughter, funny enough, I sat my daughter said, and, and my family, I said, not many are leaving. And they went, oh yeah. And it was into the 90th minute. And I'm mm. like, normally by this point you start seeing stadiums massively starting to empty. I, I, and I, funny if I was said that, and then we scored. And it's important that, that you have that, that, that you have that willingness to fight to the end. And then obviously the, in the Tuesday game, they were, they were excellent. They, they really were tremendous application. I mean, it's a very, very good Bristol Rovers side. Mm. Um, so, but that was really, that night really sort of, it sank home to me. I went home that night and thought about it all day Wednesday and, and then made the decision Wednesday afternoon. And it was one of them ones where that was a massive, massive indicator of this being the right football club. You join us in um, a pretty good run of form, good momentum at the moment. Um, two points off the playoffs. What, what are your aims now for the rest of the season? We spoke internally with one or two players what we want to do. Um, they know my objectives, they know my targets. Um, some may foresee them as being slightly high, but I see high targets being achievable ones as well if you work hard. An application to your industry is, is, should be a given. I hate, hate hearing people say, what's it like as a player? Oh, he works hard. That shouldn't even be in a match report. It shouldn't mm. be in a report of any player. It should be something that they always naturally do. And uh, I know I've got players here that are, are certainly willing to, to put a right good shift in. And, and they're lucky that they've got fans that are willing to put a shift in as well. Uh, and that's important. I've seen the, the, the drive and the determination of them. Uh, what people I get to find out of me very quickly. I don't need to say what I want to say. I say what I believe. Mm. There's no gimmicks, there's no, there's no marketing structures in this. I, uh, I've seen a group of fans very determined and willing to support their team. I've seen a group of players willing to put a shift in for them as well. And, th and them continuities from the, from the terraces to the pitch uh, are th my single biggest motivator. If we can connect these two, this will be a place that nobody wants to go and play. Mm. And you know what it takes to win promotion from this league. You did so with MK Dons just 18 months ago. How will that help you towards the mission? Yeah, here? what I did find very interesting enough is when you, you when you go on for promotion, I remember Paulie saying to me that it's hard. It's hard when you're winning. It's to keep momentum, to keep the, the, the mentality, to keep the desire, to keep to keep everything flowing in the right direction. And we did that. And it's, it's something that I think you've got to do to experience it. And once you experience it, you understand it more. Um, and you appreciate it more. Winning is, is a gift. And once you have that well, in, your, in your hands, it, you've got to work even harder to retain that. And that's one thing I did notice. Re retaining winning formulas is something that it's a lot harder than what some people think. Uh, have you had a chance to speak to the owner about what might happen in January as far as adding to the squad? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, we had very, very clear conversations. It was, uh, like I say, I met him in Paris. He asked where I was and he came to meet me. Um, and then I think the story is well documented that I came here at about 11.30 at night to meet Catherine and, and spoke about a number of different things. Um, the two of them put themselves out to, to come and meet me and um, I thought that was, that was a big thing for me as well. Um, and also the, 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 the responsibility of what happens in the, in the windows. Um, it, there's a committee of people which I'm a part of and there's no player that will be signed without the sanction of the group. And, and that's important. It's important that I have my say. It's important that I bring in the players and and they're not standing away. People say, are you in control of this? No manager is ever, ever, ever in control of any budget. <laughs> That's mm. the club's prerogative. And this one's a very good one. And this one's one that is allows us to go and really challenge this year still. And like I say, I'm, I'm looking forward to January and some additions and, and building on what is a very, very good side. You talked a couple of times about the, the club's passionate fan base. Um, they play a big part for any football club, don't they, the fans in the stands, but how much a club like Charlton are they going to make a difference? It's huge. Listen, we're in the middle of London and I've I brought teams to the capital many times. Um, there's certain things about coming into the city that you, there's, a, there's an honesty and a rawness about it that you know you, you're going to have to play well to get anything. And I, I remember with Bristol Road was a fan emotionally speaking to me and to the point of almost tears about what the club meant to him. Now that doesn't motivate a manager 
that people are willing to put their their sort of their emotions on the line to somebody they didn't even know. It just shows you the appetite for success that these people have. Uh, I'm one of them. I'm a supporter of football, and uh, I want to be proud of the team that I watch, and I equally want them to be proud of the team that they support. Uh, but I can't do this on my own. Mm. This is a collective effort. If we get promoted, it's because we've done it. If we win a game, it's because we've done it. There's no I, there's no me, there's no, it's us, we. And, and that connection right the way through has to be echoed, always. And I want to work my hardest for these people to be happy. Um, and I want to create pathways for the young people of this area to play in this first team. There's, some, there's 5% more coming in a player who comes from the area who supports the cup. It's, it's a natural thing. I've seen it for many, many years right the way through when I'm coaching at Liverpool with some of the young kids there. You see these people come through the youth system and you see them, or whether it be Delhi, MK Dons, or Brendan Galloway, whoever it may be, people have worked with who have been come through the system. That's equally special because when you want it their own, they seem to accept you. And, that, and that's a very unique blend and a very unique bond that I think is important to any football club. You mentioned the, the youngsters there and how important they can be. We have a big reputation, as you well know, of, of bringing youngsters through. Um, yeah. People like Adamo Lutman in the side, you know, mm. How important will that relationship with, between yourself and the academy staff be? Massive. I think if anyone looks at the record, I think that 50% of the squad that are left was homegrown. Mm. This year we started with nine academy grannies in the cup and ended up with 11 on the pitch throughout the course of the game. Um, and they're moments that I won't forget. But some of the players that play on this pitch are wanting to be homegrown, want to be part of the club. Um, hopefully, hopefully, I can find that right blend. It's important that I lean on the senior players. It's important that I make the senior players feel important because they have a massive role to play in the growth of these young players. Um, you've got one of the best academy coaches anywhere in the country in Steve Avery. I know people have worked with him and seen the players he's produced and I'm very, very lucky to have that in hand. The academy staff to avoid. You've seen, I watched the academy kids train Thursday and I'm going to watch them again for this evening train. Um, seeing the quality of the coaching, the quality of the people there. It's a, it's, a, it's a very unique blend. I don't think some people realise how lucky they actually are to be associated with this football club. Mm. As far as the, the style of play on the pitch goes, you, you'd be known to play quite an attractive um, brand of football. Is that something you'd be looking to instil? Ideally, in? yeah. Uh, but you don't just click your finger in this industry. It takes time, growth and belief. And there are certain aspects of our game that won't look great at the moment. There'll be a bit of a rustiness and a, or an eagerness to rotate too soon or an eagerness to press off sync or wherever it may be, but I think if you spoke to many of the players already, there's a very clear direction in which we want to play, there's a very clear protocol in which you expect of them. Um, but within that, there's got to be a fluidity and a freedom to express yourself. Mm -hmm. When you're free to, to, to do what you need to do within your workplace, that's when some of the greatest moments happen. And that the, the, it's my job to curate that fear, free environment, but with a technical, tactical structure to it. And if I can combine that together with the players that we have, I'm really, really looking forward to it. We had a quite a special visitor to the training ground today in Matt Holland. So, you know, a bit of a, a very well known and a little bit legendary player who played for the club. What was that meaning behind that? Was it something you in, you instigated? I spoke, to, I spoke to him last week about me possibly coming here and I said, Let's never do go. Will you, will you come in and see me? And I think it's important that I listen to the people. Obviously, it's Keith as well around the building constantly who was willing to offer mm. advice and someone who I've known through John Gorman, who are very, very good friends and so I've known him for a while. I thought, well, Matt, he's captain the club. He's captain the club, arguably, when the, in the Premier League, which is the pinnacle of most football clubs. And I just thought I wanted to know what was accepted here. What was, what was the way? How can we get the ex-players back involved? Mm. How can we make this club a unified club with clear direction, clear guidance? And I'm seeing that. I, I'm seeing it, honestly. I'm, you know, I, I, if it wasn't, I don't think I'd be sat here. And uh, these players are good people. I'm really excited to work with them. And finally, we can't let you go about talking about the first game. It's funny how football works out quite often, isn't it? How you know your former club, MK Dons, is going to be your first opponents. That must be is that quite a strange experience, do you think? Or something you're looking forward to? Um, I want the connection with the people here is what I had there. Um, they will tell you whether it be publicly or whether it be the media sites, that I did everything I possibly could for them. Um, I worked my hardest, my players worked their hardest for them. 
and we, 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 we laughed together and cried together and achieved great things together and surpassed anybody's expectation over a five and a half year, six year period, sorry. And I hope I can achieve it again. I'm looking forward to achieving it again. And uh, the respect that I have for that football club, I know there's a controversial birth that's always going to be lingered within the, within the history of that and the confines of that. But I tried to give them an identity. I tried to give them a, something to hold on to and believe in. And hopefully I did that. And uh, to go up against them will be, be nice for me and my family. Um, but this is this is me now. This is it's a new chapter. It's a new era. It's, it's whatever we want to call it. Um, I think for my age, I think I've got an awful lot of games under my belt. Um, I want to achieve an awful lot more. I'm still only 36, so I know I'm all 36 stone at the same time. Some people have faced me, but I think there's a there's a number of things that I want to achieve, and I am still young. I am still learning. I am going to need to lean on some senior players and some ex-players and I'm going to have to lean on the fan support and have to lean on so many different things but all I can say still be here now is how proud I am and how excited I am and what I was told when I was sat down speaking to the, to the owners it, if we can achieve what we were told with this I'm really really excited and it's all about what we do in the green stuff and uh, I'm looking forward to starting on Saturday.